the German worship service at 2.30 this afternoon here in the sanctuary, if you're interested in that. Uh, look through the uh, announcements in the weekly calendar for other kind of upcoming activities. There's a reminder there about a couple of upcoming service opportunities, the blood drive, uh, adult mission trip later on this fall, uh, adopt a family project that we're working on together with the Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. So look through all that information uh, and make sure you're up to date on all of that. Everything you need to follow along with the worship service this morning should be there uh, in your worship packet. So let's um, remain seated for now and let's join in the opening hymn.
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May be seated for the read. <laughs> the Old Testament reading for the eleventh Sunday after Pentecost is from First Kings, chapter nineteen. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the God do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I know better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was in his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. There is the reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34. We read it responsibly as it begins on page 2 in your worship pack. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This is for him cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. The epistle is 
from Ephesians chapters 4 and 5. Paul writes, This I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learn to Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin, do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may be of grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender heart, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends the reading. We stand and continue with the Alleluia verse and the reading of the gospel lesson. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord.
and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So this is cross talk, right? Jesus gave nothing less than his life on a cross for the life of the world. And also this is faith talk, because to eat the bread of life is an act of faith. It's believing in Jesus. This is the will of my Father, says Jesus, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. When Jesus was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, He told Lazarus' his sisters, Martha and Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, it shall live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. So can we all agree that homemade bread is much better than store-bought bread? And life with the bread of life is so much better than life without Jesus. And it's not just a matter of quantity. It's not just that it's eternal. It's also a matter of quality. It's not just more of the same old, same old that we might be experiencing or going through now. It's not just more of what's corrupted by sin. It's not just more of what's broken and sometimes heartbreaking. It's not just more death and what's threatened by death. It's new. It's different. Jesus has put himself into it. He loves us. God loves us. God forgives us. God's got us. So life with Jesus is far more than life that's here today and gone tomorrow. Life with Jesus is even far more than we can touch and taste, far more than what we have, far more than what makes us feel good or bad, far more than the working out of our hopes and dreams or not. The people in our text to whom Jesus was speaking still had the taste of those five barley loaves and two fish in their mouths, right? The barley loaves and fish with which Jesus had miraculously fed them. And they were remembering the manna with which God had fed their ancestors in the wilderness. But what they weren't remembering is that their ancestors ate the manna and still eventually died. So life is much more than bread and butter. Life is more than our experiences in this world. Certainly God has provided for our physical and material need. Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. And Luther reminds us in his explanation of the Lord's Prayer in the small catechism that daily bread is everything we need for this life. But Jesus came for so much more. He came as the source of eternal life, life with God that is forgiven and forever, and Jesus fed the crowd with bread as God fed his people Israel in the wilderness with manna. But again, Jesus did that as a sign to make a point. The same point that God made for his Old Testament people in the wilderness. Here's Deuteronomy 8. He humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And of course, Jesus is that word. He is that living bread that came down from heaven. The psalm that we've said together today invites us to taste and see that the Lord is good. In Jesus we are able to know and experience God. Jesus says, This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, 
but raise it up on the last day. So that I should lose nothing. And in speaking of himself as the good shepherd, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. We can't be any more secure than that. And yet, the Jews grumbled about Jesus. And their grumbling recalls the constant, stiff-necked, faithless grumbling of the people against Israel of God in the wilderness. And it recalls the attitude of Jesus' hometown people in the synagogue in Nazareth when they rejected him. So, we ask ourselves, do we grumble? And that's an important question, because grumbling, grumbling is essentially refusing to believe in Jesus. Wanting something different than he gives, or worse, something different than he is. Thereby losing out on the life that he does give. So, taste the psalmist says, and see that the Lord is good. is good. Jesus is the bread of life. He feeds us in the word. When we are forgiven the words of absolution, Jesus takes away all that stands against us, all that stands between us and God, right? all that separates us from God. And Jesus feeds us in the sacrament. When we gather around his table, then we receive nothing less than Himself. In the bread of the supper, we receive nothing less than His body broken for us. In the wine, we receive nothing less than His blood shed for us for the forgiveness of sin. And Paul reminds us about that in his letter to the Ephesians. He says, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up with Him. And then later in that same passage, he says, Be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. I like that phrase, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Kind of like fragrant homemade bread, prepared and baked in love, served and shared in love, with the love of the baker herself or himself put into it. Jesus is the bread of life, and he feeds us, nourishes and sustains us in life eternal, eternal by giving himself for life that is in himself. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding to pure hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So now let's stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He descended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Incline now your ears to us.
preserve the pure proclamation of the gospel throughout the world, thwart all false teaching and the lies of Satan, and draw many to yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ. Cause our congregation and all congregations in our circuit, district, and the synod to flourish and thrive, make them strong witnesses to their confession of faith, eager to show mercy on account of your steadfast mercy. Knit us together in unity of doctrine and love for our neighbors. Give strength and courage to all pastors and all those who assist them, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, or depression. By the example of Elijah and all who have gone before them, bring them comfort through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Hear our prayers for our nation. Cause us to live in harmony with one another. Free our citizens from want, suffering, danger, and fear. Show kindness to the sick or those in any need, including those we name our hearts before you now. Never let them be in doubt that you hear their prayers. Relieve all pain and provide for those who suffer from any kind of hardship. Comfort those who mourn by Jesus' works that he is the bread of life, and anyone who eats of this bread will live forever. Father of our risen, ascended, and glorified Lord, who has promised that those who believe in Christ is the true and living bread will never hunger or thirst. By your Holy Spirit, keep us steadfast in faith. Give us grace to live out our baptismal lives in repentance and forgiveness, and keep our eyes ever focused on the life that never ends, knowing that you will raise us up on the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 